Now, if you follow me on social media like Twitter or Tumblr, you won't be surprised when I say I'm pretty freaking gay. But even if you're completely straight and this has no personal connection to you, no one wants this shoved in their face like it constantly is. In general, we deserve better writing. There's no doubt to me that all of you, after seeing the dead name drop of a character thrown into a rando first conversation you had in Mass Effect, groaned inside. And for those of you who don't know, in Mass Effect Andromeda, when the player approaches the character Haley Abrams, you're prompted to ask why she's in Andromeda. Her response is to immediately tell you about how she's trans. Many people, like I said, were not happy with this because it's so ham-fisted, which is the core of the problem really. This stuff is just thrown in here to make some headline about how progressive and cool it is that this game has an LGBT character, not just creating a cool character that just so happens to be gay. They don't actually design these characters as characters, they're just to check off some diversity quota. And Mass Effect isn't the only example of it, it's just the most recent. So I'd also like to talk about what I consider to be the best or worst example of this, and that's Siege of Dragonspear, a 2016 expansion to Baldur's Gate Enhanced Edition. Similar to the case in Mass Effect, upon meeting an NPC, in the game one of the first things she decides to do is spout out about being trans. To its credit, it's not exactly like Mass Effect where it's literally the first thing, but there's actually quite a few NPCs like this who find the need to give out clearly personal information upon meeting the player. Again, it's not enough to have an interesting character than to maybe find out about these facets of their personality and lifestyle naturally. No actual trans person just goes blurting out about their situation with no context unless they're trying to get attention. Which, what do you know, this is exactly why this character is created. These groups must make it a political statement. And whenever this is criticized by someone, of course, it's instantly deflected by claims of, oh, it's just those women-hating gamer gators. People hated this expansion's writing because it didn't mesh well with the stylish writing of the game it was expanding on. They didn't sign up for the package they were given, one that goes against the world and its already established lore. But why deal with valid criticism when you can just blame Gamergate, am I right, fellow journalist? However, as sad as it is that these are the games mostly covered and praised by gaming media, there are games that do do it right, actually respecting the characters as individuals, not putting such focus on their sexuality. The first game I want to talk about is Yoko Taro's Nier. Anyone who's fully experienced this game can tell you just how memorable the cast is. It's easily one, if not my favorite parties in any game. And in this party lies two characters I want to talk about, the first of which is Emil. Now you might not even know this if you played the game, but Emil is canonically gay. It's somewhat hinted at throughout the journey, especially in the Japanese exclusive version with Brother Nier. In this version, Emil even outright states he would like to be Nier's wife after a talk about marriage, which I guess that might be considered more than hinting. The point here being though that Emil became one of my favorite characters because of who he is. His actions, attitude, everything that happened along the journey created an emotional investment with me, to the point where I tear up hearing certain songs nowadays. It just so happens that he turned out to be gay though. Similar to Emil, another character in the party, Kanye, is a hermaphrodite. This is hinted at far less throughout the game, but the same applies. Kanye is an amazing character because of who she is, not because there's a thing between her legs. Again, both of these things were hinted at in the game, as I said, but were fully confirmed by the creator himself during an interview. In this same interview, Tarui gave out one of my absolute favorite quotes in this topic. For context, the interviewer was giving some possible mystic explanation for Emil's attraction to men, where Tarui then stated, no, he's gay, which led him to saying this. How would you define unusual, is the question. If we look around, we can definitely see homosexuals, few in number they may be. I'm not trying to say don't discriminate or anything like that, just people like that exist. It's simply the way the world works. They're labeled with normal, unusual, and compared quite often. But the difference between people with certain sexual preferences lies purely in number. Some are quite abundant, some are not. But we're all in the same world. I never intended for them to appear as special. I like this quote from Taro a lot, because while these other game developers like to go around talking about how progressive they are, they don't respect these characters enough to treat them as a normal character, they turn them into the gay character. They just want to parade them around for media attention or show off their progressiveness, or make sure it's blatantly shoved in people's faces just so you know how inclusive they are. If you look at Taro's characters, however, it's not like this. Them being a fully functional character comes first. Kanye would be just as awesome as a person if she didn't have a dick, and Emil would be as well if he didn't love dick. The other example I actually want to take a look at is a more well-known example and that's Blizzard's Overwatch. Now, I suspect when I say that, some people might say that Overwatch is not actually a good example at all, because you could argue that it did make somewhat of a show of the reveal, which is where I disagree to an extent, for a few reasons. I don't think you need to have a gay character's sexuality completely taking a backseat, like Nier, where it's never shown, as long as the reveal is natural. 
In Tracer's case, the reveal of her sexuality came in the Overwatch Christmas comic. This comic focused on many relationships within the Overwatch cast. We got a romance between Angela and Genji hinted at, as well as seeing Torb with his family and his closeness with Reinhardt, among a few other things. Then, like I said, the reveal of Tracer's girlfriend. They didn't make some huge announcement that they were revealing the gay character. Tracer wasn't smooching her girlfriend on the cover, and any past mention of a gay character at all came from the media asking if there was one. Not of their own accord, which, when they were asked, they refused to say who it was. You could argue that maybe I'm giving Blizz too much credit and Tracer wasn't originally planned to be gay. Maybe they just made her gay after all the clamoring for a gay character. But to me, even if this is the case, like Emile, she comes off as a character who is gay, not, hey guys, look, it's our gay character. The most important thing to take away from this is relevance. The reveal of a character has to come naturally, not just shoved in your face the mere second you interact with them. The way it's handled on Mass Effect and Boulder Skate would be like if you select a tracer on the hero screen and you just heard, I'm gay. The last thing I want to talk about is the frequency of gay characters appearing. No matter the setting of any medium nowadays, you always see the mainstream media clamoring for a more diverse cast without considering the context of the actual story in most cases. Because anybody could realistically be gay or trans, you don't really run into the location or time period issue with this. However, it's important to remember that we're such a small portion of the population, which is one of the main reasons I don't think every game needs to have several of them, like others seem to think. I'd much rather have an amazing character like Emil be gay every now and then, than several dozen characters done like Mass Effect or Boulder Skate. I don't think I'm particularly special for not being straight, and I don't think any of these characters are particularly special for it either. Like Tara said, our differences are mainly just in number. Also, one last thing, if you're gonna put a cute trap character in your waifu game Nintendo, let me gay fuck it.